We got the May 21. Brief history of Chicago's black gangs. Southside. Melvin Bailey. William Troop. Fletcher Pugh. Mickey Cogwell. Theodis Clark. Henry Cogwell. Lawrence White. Adam Bestie. Leroy Harrison, Jeff Ford, Eugene Harrison, Charles Edward Bay, Hubert Stevens, George Martin, Sylvester Hutchins, Lee Jackson, Paul Martin, Edwin Codell, George Rose, Andrew McChristian, Herman Holmes, David Barksdale, Jerome Freeman, and Larry Hoover, Main 21. Okay, 1966, people. We got Devil Disciples, led by David Barksdale, Black King Cobras. Led by Jerome Freeman. And by 69, 1969, Supreme Gangsters, led by Larry Hoover. Now, between 84 and 90 on out, we got the New Breeds. Black Gangsters renamed to New Breeds in 1991. And then, of course, GDs and BDs. The Gangster Disciples was led by Larry Hoover, and the Black Disciples was led by David Barksdale. All this began in 1966. Uh, probably can go back further than that. When, you know, uh, each of these guys, you know, started moving in certain lo locations and neighborhoods in like 57 and 58. Stuff started getting real, you know, in the uh, late 60s, mid and late 60s, basically. Black Peace Stones. We got Eugene Harrison, who lived at 1404 East Marquette, and it was January 1968. Jeff Ford, who lived at 6536 South Blackstone, moved there in 1955. Let's move on over to the BDs and the GDs. We got Larry Hoover, who lived at 6853 South Green, September 1968. And then David Barksdale lived at 6424 South Ashland, May 1968. You got to keep in mind these brothers were teenagers as well. They were teenagers as well. Okay, gang structure as of 1968, gang structure as of 1968, Black Peace Stone, Jeff Ford, and then we got Acting President Charles Bay, Vice President Johnny Fort, Nation Enforcer was Melvin Burley, The Devil Disciples, was David Barksdale, Nick Dorenzo, the West Side Disciples, President was Ortiz, Commander, uh, they called him OJ, and the Vice President was Mitchell Newton, they called Bull. East Side Disciples was Mango Strad, Roy Dawson, what they called Kilroy. And with the Black King Cobras was Jerome Freeman. And I guess it's a KT for the Vice President. Now, uh, I want to, I guess, you know, uh, briefly discuss about some of the things that they, you know, carried on back then, you know. But I will probably be forever explaining it. But, uh... 
something that came across when I was like, you know what I'm saying, reading through these uh, papers and getting the story about some of these cats that, that was, you know, doing what they was doing for certain leaders. Uh, you got one, uh, his name was Cornell Steele. His name was Cornell Steele. Uh, one of the earliest homicides, Cornell Steele, 22, a, a uh, enforcer for the BPS in had killed a guy named Watusi. His name was Watusi. I don't know how to spell it though. Uh, he killed someone first named Thomas Hood, 40 years of age, on February 18, 1968. He was charged for it in March 30th. A jury acquitted him, acquitted Cornell, on December 9th. And then he killed someone else. He killed someone else on uh, December 25th. Which is another game member by the name of James McCain, who they call Watusi. And he was a BPSN. Both of them was BPSN. But the reason why he... Uh, killed him is because he's supposed to be changing his allegiance to another rival gang. So yeah, it's getting down here like first BPSN killing. Cornell still killed another gang member, James McCain, also known as Watusi, on December 25th at 41st, uh, 4160 South Drexel, Army 307. McCain, known as Watusi, had been shot five times with two bullets to the brain. McCain had talked about changing his allegiance to a rival gang. The story behind how that had went down was that uh, some, some, I guess, uh, uh, still people's heard him talking about it to his moms about what he was going to do to Watusi. And I guess she snitched or whatever, you know, that's how he ended up getting caught. But anyway, the way it post had went down was that they had got up with McCain and had him on the wall. They had him on the wall or something like that and told him to bend down on his knees. And they was all around him. Uh, I guess somebody was saying the Ten Commandments. And then uh, Cornell still was the last person. But they, as they was walking around McCain, they was kissing him on the forehead. And Cornell was the last one, I guess, to kiss him on the forehead, then shot him. Bye, 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 bye. But only killed him. And now this was uh, supposed to have been uh, led by Jeff Ford. He, he, you know, gave him the, the spill to do it. You know, so yeah, that's 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 how that went down. And, you know, it was rumored that uh, McCain was supposed to be trying to go somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? And in the middle, of, before he had got popped off, he's begging one of them to not, you know, kill him. He was begging one of the guys, you know, not to go and knock him out. But you know, hey, they was ruthless too back then. You know, and he, you know, he got the hit to do it. So uh, Cornell still killed. Uh, McCain, who they call Watusi. We had another uh, incident, well, <laughs> another thing that went down, you know, I guess with uh, by the name of James Highsmith. I looked him up, he's still living, he out, he supposed to be running some type of organization called or something like for gang violence or domestic violence or something like that. So he's still living James Hasmill. But uh, in September 1968, Larry Hoover, 18 at the time, and two others were shot in the leg at Parker High School. Was uh, Mildred Sybils, 15, and Louise uh, Jackson, 15. James Hasmith and Leonard Longsmith, both 18 and both of Eastside Double Disciples, were arrested for it. Hasmith is a future number three leader, nation enforcer for the BDs, and at that time lived at 65th and Emerald, 6534 South Emerald, 
All three high school students were rushed to St. Bernard's Hospital for treatment. And yeah, Larry Hoover was one of them. 18. These, these dudes back then was hitting hard. They was 18, 16, 17, 15, 14 years old. Shooting and killing each other. Like I said, uh, James Highland, Highsmith, he's still living. Surprisingly, with all the things he was doing, you know what I'm saying? He He's still living. So lives. I seen a, a, a video with him. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, hey, it is what it is. So, I want to come across some, you know, stories about how these cats was doing their thing, too. And how they was, you know, living that life, gang banging and shooting and killing. It's the same thing what these cats is doing today. Unfortunately, these cats is, is, is they damn for some reason, they damn more and quicker than back then. <laughs> and these was 1968 rival gangs. 60s? These cats was in the 60s killing each other. So, you know, moving on about uh, the gang structure. Um, Vice President, we got the ble we got the Black P Stone, Joe Ford, and the Acting President Charles Bay, Vice President Johnny Ford, Nation Enforcer Melvin Burley, Devil Disciples David Barksdale, Nick Dorenzo. Westside Disciples, President for these Commando, OJ, Vice President Mitchell Newton as Boar, Eastside Disciples, Mingo Stred or Street, and then Roy Dawson, Kilroy. His name his nickname I guess Kilroy. And then Black King Cobras was Jerome Freeman and Vice President was KT. It was a, another one I wanted to, to discuss about uh, Jeff Ford having his son jump for also trying to go to another gang or whatever, you know. I don't know what was the deal between him and his son, but it was another incident about that, too. I think uh, that was in 1986. I think in 1986. Last story for Jeff Ford ruling the streets. Jeff Ford was taken by feds in summer 1986. And in 1991, a snitch testified the story about Ford that he ordered a violation to his son. Antonio Ford in 1986 at the Fort Temple which was demolished in June of 1990. His son had tried to start his own gang. That's what it was. He was trying to start his own gang. Antonio Fort. Mm. And Fort didn't allow it. Pops, he ain't allowed it. So while on the phone from prison to the Fort Temple, Fort said, Son, I told you, I keep my promises. According to the snitch Henry Harris, six of the 14 ambassadors formed a circle around Antonio. Fort then said, Ambassadors, I want you to drum him until I tell you to stop. When the man hesitated, Fort said, I can't hear nothing. <laughs> the ambassadors then attacked Antonio for about a minute. His arms were handcuffed behind his back the whole time. Then just spoke to his son alone. Then he was free. <laughs> he had his own son whoop because he was trying to start his own gang. That's crazy. His pops go to jail and he out here trying to start his own gang. Fort get whooped for me. I'm over the phone saying whoop him. And they did it. <laughs> Henry Harris, who is the husband of Jeff Ford's sister, told the courts he tried to get Antonio 
to escape the beating. When U.S. Attorney Theodore Poulos asked Harris why, Harris said he witnessed something and never said nothing about it. When Poulos asked Harris to explain that, he said, he caught me with his mother. <laughs> Did you have an affair with Diane Ford? And he said, yeah. <laughs> so basically... Henry was saying that he was trying to look out for Antonio because basically Antonio looked out for Henry for catching him sleeping with his mom, and he ain't never say nothing to his dad. He married to he married to Antonio's auntie, which is Fort's sister. But Antonio caught Henry with his mommy, <laughs> just for her wife, I guess you know. Yeah, his wife. Yeah, because she got his last name. So basically, he was trying to look out for him because he didn't say nothing, you know. <laughs> so basically, you know, that's I want to throw that out there. It was like one of those little trivial little stories that, you know, we can just shake our heads about. <laughs> we got the Gregory Shell story. Gregory Shell is Shorty G. July 19th. 1974, 16-year-old Gregory Shell and 14-year-old Serene R. Trailer charged with murder of a 66-year-old woman, really, Josephine Hay, in an armed robbery outside of St. Albie's Catholic Church, 90th and Harper, 90. 15 South Harper. Gregory Shell is the future number two leader for GDs for the early 1990s. Shell back to the church. Shell, okay, I'm sorry, y'all. Shell lived at 8245 South Blackstone and trailer at 7941 South Wood. Now, note that. At this time, during this little incident right here in 74, they are both BPSN at this time. They are both Black Peace Stone Nation at this time, 1974. Josephine was shot in the neck and ran back to the church and allegedly died in the priest's arms. So, uh, in the 90s, Gregory, also known as Shorty G, had uh, flipped into uh, GD, he dropped his flag and went against the disciple. And he became number two leader. But it was my surprise when I read this because I thought that Shorty G, if this the same Shorty G, I thought that Shorty G became the number two for the black disciples. I never known for a number two to have occurred under Larry Hoover. Never known that. And we're talking about the 90s. I never heard of any gangster disciples claiming that Shorty G was the number two leader. Everybody was claiming Larry Hoover for a long time. Never heard of him being part of the gangster disciples. I always thought that he was supposed to had took, he was supposed to came after David Barksdale. Even though David Barksdale died, uh, I think in the 70s, something like that. But I didn't know that Gregory Shell was a number two leader for the Gangster Disciples in the 90s. I didn't know that. I'm still kind of needing to look for more information about that because that's news to me. Anyway, September 2nd, 1974, David Barksdale dies of kidney failure at 27, buried in Restville Cemetery. His funeral was at Golden Gate Funeral Home, 2036 West 79th Street, survived by his wife Yvonne, known as Cookie, son David Four, and twins Melinda and Ronald, 17 months, and 13 brothers and sisters. His wife died on June 24, 1978. 
So yeah, David Barsdale died in 1974. He had got shot in the kidneys. And uh, he survived. He survived the, the gunshot. Well, I, I don't know where I had read that left off at where he had got shot at, but he did get shot. And uh, due to kidney failure, that's when he died. At 27, but after he had passed away, I, you know, as years passed back, you know, I, I was born in the late 70s, so I didn't get with about nothing. No, it's like in the 80s and the 90s, but I, I, I was still stunned about Shorty G. I thought Shorty G, if this the same Shorty G, had became uh, chief of the black disciples after. Uh, the past no David Barksdale. But hey. So yeah, you know, that's the story about that so far. I try not to go too deep because uh I don't wanna keep getting strikes on my videos and all this shenanigan because you know you two hate on me. I, I I'm I'm too deep and too spiritual at times for them, so they they don't like my channel. You know, people get a whiff of, of me speaking spiritual. They complain about that, you know. So, I mean, I'm not finna stop teaching the truth, but I'm, well, at least with this, speaking about the main 21 gangs, it, it ain't worth me going through all that, you know, speaking about the gangs. So, we have interview with a GD board member. I myself personally met Gator. I, I met him uh, personally twice, like 1995 when they had the Million Man March in Washington, uh, D.C., DC, but they were Gator and, and the, the, uh, the Gangsta Disciples back then, like the shorties and whatnot, my age back then, like 17, 18, had them out there passing out flyers, you know, to the gas to try to go on down there and, and, and get with for the march. But I met him then, and then I met him again personally on the train back like it was 2012 or something like that, I want to say. Uh, maybe 20, I don't know, 2011 or 2012. I met him on the train, and we talked for a minute on the train alone. And Gator is the, uh, he was, he was, he was uh, one of the board members for Larry Hoover. He was one of the board members for the Gangster Disciples back then. In the 80s and 70s or uh, 80s or something like that, y'all. So yeah, I you know he's he's a cool cat. He was trying to run for I think I forgot what uh, political thing he was trying to run for, but you know he was trying to do his thing. You know in the 90s, good good brother though. Anyway, so interview with a GD board member. I don't know who this board member is that's speaking, but. I don't I don't know who this brother is, but we gon we gon going on with the story about what he was saying. So in spring 2021, and this is 2021, so this is recent. I got a confirmation from a GD board member that Booker Ransom was the first GD to be killed. This was to clear confusion that all the newspapers mistakenly listed Booker Ransom as a devil disciple than Supreme Gangster. When Jeff Ford declared Stones a Muslim gang in 1976, and hundreds flipped to GDs. This is a trivia right here, y'all. When Jeff Ford declared Stones a Muslim gang in 1976, and hundreds flip to GDs. And that's what usually happens, people. Quote, positive state. People don't want to be on that, man. They, they, man. they ain't trying to be Muslim. People want to eat pork, drink alcohol. They want to do their thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's a video up here, you know, with uh, Jeff Ford. You know, they had a little party back in the day. And I seen a couple brothers in the fort drinking beer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They was smashing, eating chicken wings and drinking beer. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, man. Uh, but I, I don't know if that was then when they flipped. Uh, uh, but I, it had to been that because they was throwing the air rookie party. So it had to been either. Well, if it was 
1976 is when he uh, changed it from uh, Stones to Errol Ruckins in 1970. So this party that they was at, it was it had to be like in the late 70s or early 80s because of the music that they was playing in the background was like late 70s, early 80s. So yeah, they was Errol Ruckins. And like I said, I didn't see a couple of cats in there getting down, smashing you know, eating whatever they was eating. It looked like some pork to me and some beer. They, I seen the Miller's light in their hand. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> but to 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 make a point about it, what I'm saying, when you try to have an organization, you try to flip it for, for good means or whatnot, you know, the brothers and the sisters, they ain't trying to hit it. They don't want to be part of nothing that's, quote, positive because it's going to make them seem like they're a punk or something. You know what I'm saying? Just like with Larry Hoover when he... Uh, tried to change it to growth development instead of gangster disciples. A lot of people stopped. You know, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people went from GD to BD back then. And in this case, when Ford declared Stones a Muslim gang in 76, like they said, hundreds flipped GDs. And that's, I, 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 in, the, in, the, in the 80s, <laughs> gangster disciples had the whole South Side sold up. And as I got a little older and, and started seeing and knowing things and getting information about it, I know for a fact the Gangster Disciples was running it on the south side of Chicago. I seen it. And then, like, later on when Hoover switched from Gangster Disciples to growth development, then you had majority of the GDs, they flipped and went BD. People ain't trying to hear that. People ain't trying to be, quote, positive, even though these gangs is not positive when they do that. It's just a storefront. That's all it is. But just the sound of it sound whack to most of these cats. So they'll flip, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you, you got to stand by some of the, the rules on what the gangs stand for. You know, and some of these cats ain't trying to hear that, man. They ain't growth development, man. Man, man, road development money, man. That's what they thinking about. Uh, uh, Air Rookie, man. Look at, I, I, I want my pork. I want my pig feet. I want my hot dogs. I'm drinking my beers. You know what I'm saying? So people ain't trying to be on that. Gregory Shell, Shorty G, was the biggest ranking GD that flipped from. The biggest ranking stone to flip was Kabar. Very familiar name. A big stone general from Motown to No Love City, 59th and Halsted. He flipped early 80s when he couldn't adhere to not eating pork or drinking alcohol. I just said that. The biggest ranking for both gangs was Moon from the west side. A smaller stone general to GD then became GD governor in the 80s. From Chicago, Lockwood to Kilbourne, Van Buren, this west side right here. The biggest ranking BD that used to be a stone from that flip was two, was two of them. Dirty Mike, who was minister of the Henry Horner Homes in the 80s and 90s. Then after him, Trey Sean, who succeeded him in the late 90s. Both of them were originally gangster stones. This was before Gangsta Stones split off from the Stones. All, all, look at all that. All these new new information about how these gangs was, was named and how they stopped and began. And see, that's the reason why I started off with the main 21. See, the main 21 was the main, all of them together. They was all in cahoots with each other back then. All of them was in cahoots with each other. The gang could have been black. Power, disciple, gangster, the, the cobra, they could have had a big name like that. And you know what I'm saying? They could have just went on and just did right for the community. All of them could have just got together, made one big name for all of them. And ran the whole southwest side, whole Chicago, and probably would have been a nice, decent, billionaire-ran city with black people. You see how the males was running it back then and how they treated the black people, put all of them in one little area. 
on the south side, all these projects, they built it up. Yeah, okay, well, hey, you know, they should have did the same thing. Went on and demolished the buildings and made some big, nice homes for the blacks. Yeah, Jeff Ford had millions of dollars that he didn't, he didn't manipulated the government to give him and just misused it for his own selfish, evil intentions. You know, but if he'd have done right with that money, he ain't no way alone. Him alone would have been successful with the communities on the south side. And they had programs, they had buildings, but they just <laughs> did otherwise negative means with it. And, of course, which got them locked up for the rest of their lives. Years later, Edward Moore was a BD that wanted to be a leader, so he paid Freeman to flip two BDs in prison in the 90s for a minister position. He didn't like the GDs and hated a lot of their leaders, so BDs was his choice. When he got out of prison, he wore a lot of expensive jewelry and had more bodyguards that followed him than Freeman did. So Freeman told him to cut down on both. The biggest ranking GD to flip was Valentino, a GD board member. Flipped to CVL, then killed by, by vice lords April 96 because he extorted. Two months later, a different GD that flipped to MIVL, Knowles was his name, Jimmy, Jimmy Lee Jackson, was killed by VL's June 96, also for extorting. The biggest ranking GD, Stones, and BDs tortured by John Burge. You know, if y'all familiar with the Burge uh, tortures, the guy, the, the, that white fat man who, who, uh, who was the chief and was torturing all the gang members. <clears throat> Back then, and they had that big fat lawsuit. Mm hmm. But there have been some governors, Madge from E. Dub, Inglewood, Mr. Luis, and G. Sharp from Westside. For, for Stones, Two Stone General was tortured by Bird before. The rail cannon and Pharaoh, then the nation enforcer White Cloud and Patrol Peanut. These crazy names, man. For BDs, no board members been tortured by Burge before, but there have been some ministers. KT, the minister of ministers, Jackie Wilson, but took his membership away in prison. And Kenny Parker, then a co-minister, Melvin Jones. How did David Barksdale and Larry Hoover first met? They grew up together but did not attend the same high school. In 1969, when David Barksdale asked Larry Hoover for their two gangs to merge into a unity, where did that conversation take place? Washington Park. Everybody know what Washington Park is We're from Chicago. Like I said, I'm just I'm speaking on behalf from an uh, interview with a GD board member. That's why the questions and the answers sounding the way it sounded. It's an interview with a GD board member. I don't know what board member that is, but I can say that the board member I have met was Gator. He was very sp spoken. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's very spoken, so I can't say that's him, but that's the only one that I know of that's, you know, more speakative about uh, Larry Hoover and, you know, how they did their thing back then and whatnot. When the two gangs decided to merge, what church did that meeting take place? At Jesse Jackson's church in 50th and Drexel. See? Jesse, uh, Jesse uh, Jackson Church. And I know where that's at. That's Rainbow, Bo uh, Rainbow Push Coalition place, 50th and Drexel. And this is back in the 60s. So y'all know the famous picture with uh, 
Jesse Jackson, Jeff Ford, and Mickey Cockwell. So there you go right there. So you know he ain't lying. Table of John Burr's Torches Compensations. July 2012. 53.575 million. 44.9 million from the city, 8.655 million from the county. May 2013, minus 60 million. June 2018, 115 million. September 2018, 132 million. 83 million from the city. 2019, 140 million. Expected another 14 million for 2022. Wee. For Detective Guevara, as of fifth, uh, as of February 8, 2022, 73 million dollars, 53 million to four people. 20 million attorney fees. Wow. We talking about millions from 2012 all the way to 2022. Man, 10 years of millions of dollars because of the John Burr's tortures. So, the good news is that they get millions out of this for those that was tortured by this prick. <sighs> Just a brief history on the main 21 back then with the gangs and where they at now and, and, and what they uh, went through themselves and, you know, in the midst of, of their upbringing with the gang violence. Let's put the guns down, let's pick up these Bibles, and let's stay respectful amongst each other. We'll live long we use our wisdom, godly wisdom that is. You gotta use godly wisdom, you'll live longer. Only fools die sooner than they supposed to.